Welcome to uh, our project and idea for health communication background services. And as we have a team, uh, the last but one team, the minor core is the light at the end of the tunnel. So let me introduce the guys who want to attract you the next uh, couple of minutes. It's um, on my right, um, Sebastian. And I'm <laughs> Sebastian, yeah. Sebastian, I'm German. I'm Roland, Roland, I'm English, yeah. We, we, um, uh, studying computer science at the University of Munich, of light science, um, a guiding tour of our city you have been enjoying this morning already. Um, and we got Johannes, uh, he joined our team from the University of Regensburg and he studies uh, computer science with a uh, topic of medical training. Yeah, okay. So what are we talking about to you? This um, we want to introduce our idea behind the Health Background Communication Service. Um, then we introduce into the uh, project parts of our idea. Afterwards, um, an example of a self-made um, electrocardiograph as an agent. You will hear about it later. So what sounds this? This sounds like a prototype. Yeah. We got the German teams and none of them had prototypes. All other teams had prototypes, so we felt forced to uh, make one at the sauna this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, at, the, at the end, we want to um, tell you what we intend to implement, intend to implement uh, in our project uh, in Helsinki in the two weeks. So, starting about our project, um, the main idea is um, to create a system kind of um, monitoring um, so that um, not only elder people, as uh, they are mostly the target audience of, uh, of the project for e-health, also um, persons who have had an operation or something like this, um, this system is intended to um, let them return earlier to their homes, even if there should be some measurements or um, some um, things to, uh, to be monitored. So what can we see here? We see agents, we see manager, sounds familiar though, but um, it only seems like a spoiling from this morning. Um, this morning uh, were parts of the, parts of the project um, we implement, and um, this was uh, the construction of each part. So we want to use the standards as they are for, connect, for interconnecting our, um, yeah, our agents and managers and connecting flights. So, what are the service functionality of our project? <coughs> our service um, should acquire health data from the agents via the standard of X73. Um, we'll get on, uh, Sebastian will talk to you later about this in, in, in detail. Um, we want to temporarily store also these data we acquire from each sensors, the agents are the sensors as we know so um, that we can um, make some pre-evaluation of the data that we don't send um, all the data and the whole amount of data to any user. Um, this was the smart and individual pre-evaluation of data. Then we want to transmit the data we pre-evaluated or we send it up as a whole um, by using the standard HR7. We will um, get a presentation of HSL, I think, on Monday, 14th, yeah. So, um, this is also a big issue. And um, because we are using these medicals, uh, uh, medical data standards, we uh, won't inter uh, integrate in our system any kind of interaction like voice dialing or something like this to, uh, to the patients. Um, the main issue of the whole project is even to use these standards because uh, there are many advantages if we use standards. Um, these are open standards, so we can uh, arise the amount of agents, of sensors, because um, they don't have to be, they uh, just have to use um, the standard with transmitting the data they measure. And it doesn't matter how the sensors for itself work. So it doesn't matter from which company they were made or something like this. Um, the, the prototype we will, uh, will, which will be introduced by Johannes will show 
how flexible the system can be if you, if you use standards. So um, let's talk about the components of our project. The users won't be, um, won't be in the focus of our project we will uh, implement in Helsinki, but they are also very important, for, they are indeed very important for the system because they are the ones who yeah, make it to be used. Uh, the users of the systems are the physicians and the, uh, the therapists or medical applications. It's not to mix up because users sound similar like the person, maybe the patient, but the user isn't the patient, the user is especially the other side. The patient is the one who is the agent. So um, medical applications are critical health system alerts or as we heard from the team of uh, Slovenia, the uh, electronic, um, the electronic, the Thank you, thank you, Gina. This is also a system that can be connected by using the standards and act as a user. So what are the advantages for the users and also for the patients? The advantages are that we have easy and anytime access to the health data because the user can connect to the um, manager system that is uh, it's, it's suited in the home of the patient, maybe. Um, we, have a we have the manager to be remote configured, so um, the user can configure the manager to measure data in form that is, uh, that is needed at the time. So um, you don't have to uh, put the agent on and just get every information you can get, so, so you can tell him, okay, manager, get the information from the agent and then you can configure the uh, pre-development of the data so you don't get every stuff but only the stuff you need. Um, this goes uh, hand with the simplified setup to make this. And another really good advantage is a fully monitored recovery at home. As we told, if you got an operation from any disease, I don't know what exactly, um, you don't have to be all time in hospital so that they can measure the data and measure the data every time uh, a day. Um, you can do this at home if you've got the, the special sensors you need. Or um, yet another uh, advantage is even if you want to um, gain long-term information about um, yeah, having, some, having some treatment, you can see <coughs> how, it's, um, how your treatment is working. If you want to get long-term uh, long-term information about uh, about your about your sensors and measurements, you always have to stay in the hospital, regularly come to the hospital, or make your measurements yourself and note it on a piece of paper or something like that, and then go to the doctor. It's very complicated. It can be done very easy with this system. So let's talk about the agents. The agents are, yeah, as we all know, pulse meters, glucose meters. Our meters we can we can imagine, and also um, electric for electric cardiograms. And yeah, what are we using? The Internet of Things, the interconnection of the of the yeah, machines. Let's call it like this: uh, Bluetooth, Zigbee, VLAN, and yeah, infrared. Maybe infrared. Why not? It's very flexible to use the communication because the communication system on the base doesn't matter, just the standard and the uh, transformation of the data, uh, transferring of the data is um, important. So now Johannes will introduce his tool. So welcome everyone. Um, we learned about, uh, a lot about Raspberry Pi and Linux today, or also week, so I came, we have something else, Raspberry is boring, everyone use it. So we took the cool one, Beagleball Black. How many people know Beagleball Black? Uh, Less than Raspberry. Fine. Okay. Um, Beagleball Black uh, is like a Raspberry, but it's much cooler because you have a faster CPU if you want to do more calculations. You have a lot of a lot of pins more than Raspberry Pi. You have make micro HDMI if you need an output, but. Um, you have the same amount of RAM and just all you have. But the one feature is you have local storage on it. Raspberry Pi has no local storage, so you need a SD card. You have here two gigabytes of local EMMC storage, so you can put so as you want direct onto the device. And why we choose Beagleball Black? Because it's not a special 
but it's just an example for ECB, so we don't need to use this kind of self-made thing in this project because we have really good solutions in Austria and Slovenia. So that's why we are here. It's a global project. Everyone brings his ideas in and we combine them. So why use some sort of that thing if we have some cool applications we can do everything. So we are flexible with this kind of simulation thing. We can put on Ubuntu, Xtreme, Debian, Android. So we can simulate every device as an agent as you want. And as uh, Casper said, we use most of this in Linux, so we are free to our components if you, for the transmission and uh, transmitting the data. So I just show you the example we have here for the ECB. Uh, it's basically the Beetlebone Black connected to the pins to a um, BCD which is self-made, kind of old school, not really integrated, but it works, but not today. <laughs> I have got the uh, electrodes and we had yesterday a small pre-test and wasn't so successful, I think I need a soldering iron to fix it. It doesn't work right. But to show um, how this is built off, um, we have no direct connection to the power socket on the wall, we use a battery, like you can re upload, uh, reload your mobile phone, it's enough power for the remote, and you just give the power to the uh, circuit, get the information, um, make it a high value, put it into the big bone and read it. So we can simulate any device, you can not just put the circuit on, you could do everything. Like your pulse meter, put it into the pins, read the pins, and you can simulate a pulse meter or something like that. So we have here some dongles, we have a Wi-Fi dongle with a Bluetooth 4 c or a smart dongle here also. And some kind of fitness tracker from Adidas to, to measure how much um, how much distance do you uh, yeah how yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so we are quite flexible, you just uh, push the, the dongle in and you have the um, communication device you want. Yeah, that's the basic thing about it. So with the female bone or, or Raspberry Pi or the thing from Austria, we can simulate every agent to prove our concept from the agent to the end user. Features for simulation and agent. We have some expansions, as I mentioned, um, dongles or sticks for communication protocols, or like touchscreen uh, shields. You just put it on and you can simulate any device. So let's say, um, where do you need a touchscreen? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. You can simulate everything. You need a touchscreen, so you just put in the dongle, let's say for Bluetooth, put on the touchscreen, write some code for measuring the data, and you can simulate the device, put it on the manager, and that's it. It's just for simulation purposes. Okay, so here are the real electrodes, and we have a picture from the yesterday, from yesterday measurement. So the guy came over, thanks to you, really good. He came over on the door, he said, hey, come in, put off your shirt, we need to measure you. <laughs> and yeah, that's some data for me, it's not for this um, session, but as you can see, it works. Not yesterday and not now, but just for for an example. And how easy it is to use with the Beagle Down to, to get the data from out the circuits like ECB and so you can use almost every language like C, C, Java, Python. So everyone can use it because everyone knows at least one programming language. So we are free, everyone can do something with this project. And it's just let's say 30 lines of code to get the value from the pin to put it to the manager. That's it. Okay, thank you. So now we uh, come to the part of the manager. The manager uh, has to be the, the station that is placed in, uh, at the helm of the patient. Um, it can be suited on a smartphone, it can be suited on a um, PC, a little PC, or something like this. Uh, we just need a kind of computer. Um, what does the manager can do? Um, the configuration of the managers are um, add and remove agents, agents as you need it. So um, it also can um, it also can handle 
agents for uh, different users. The standard X, uh, X73 um, provides a um, provides a, a method to uh, check whether it's, uh, there are different patients. Yeah. Okay. That was the second part. So, and customizing the smart um, customizing smart modules, which are um, previously used to um, make the pre-evaluation of the data as we need it. Um, Sebastian will talk about this in, uh, soon. So we can also cache acquired data in, the, in a database locally. That's uh, also the thing we need uh, that we don't have to send all time, all amount of uh, measured data. And then finally, um, the transmission of the health data or the pre-evaluated data for, uh, via the standard of HL7 to the users. So. Uh, smart, smart manager modules. We like to um, shrink the data so that we only send the uh, really important health data we acquired to the uh, user, like the physician, or yeah, you've heard it before. And it's important, if, for example, if you have a um, heart issue, and it's really important if you only get about two hours of a uh, heart measurement if there was this kind of uh, heart beta or something like this and all other data which is normal and unimportant you don't have to transmit um, over the network so we have the advantages we have less power consumption because we don't have to transmit that and le therefore less network congestion and of course we store that the data locally we have a much higher data privacy. The advantages, uh, if you, yeah, we are building upon is open standards, so we don't use uh, proprietary software. And with the standards, we have much more flexibility. And yeah, the standards are open, so they are cheap, and we can access more devices. <coughs> So with HL7, we can um, receive, uh, if we send our data to HL7 applications, it isn't important for us what they do, because they can just use the data, and uh, yeah, it's open. So uh, web databases like sports, trackers, or something like this can use it to analyze our sports activity, we go to go around and do our sports and we can transmit it to the long-term evaluation if there's a clinical study and of course to the health institutes like your doctor or hospital school. <coughs> and Hatsuki, we are going to implement the manager with uh, the basic configuration options. Yeah, you tell us before? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> uh, like um, the setup, um, what agent we want, and how they should interact with us, and the user connection. This means that we transmitted the data to the user, so page 7. Therefore, we have an RP, which is called RP for Health Level 7 RP. And uh, the University of Madrid created a um, X73 um, Java RP, which we can use also. It's called Libresoft. So, if you want to join our team, you're welcome. And we want to produce a release candidate in a short time, and it should be possible. So, if you have any further questions, now's the time to ask. <laughs>